Are you aware of any other um, contracts with the um, with the public relations company called Pomps and uh, with the oh sorry? No no no, but take your time. We're we're not in a rush. It starts at ten, so it's ten. Uh, that's all right. I was just I'm, I'm not in any rush. I was know? just wondering if you're if you're aware of any other government contracts with the company called Pomp and Circumstance? No, I'm not. That was easy. Any any tougher question than that today? In terms of the critical minerals uh, yeah. file, uh, we heard uh, from your uh, your staff or you know, the department staff that hundreds of companies uh, within that file would have connections to foreign companies. What kind of review are you doing in terms of uh, making sure that they fit within the uh, national security yeah. framework now? So we are, um, as you know, under the ICA. Uh, these transactions needs to be notified in order to have a national security review. Uh, you may have seen we just introduced a new law, uh, at least a, a bill, uh, where we would strengthen the power and the authorities of the minister to have more agility, uh, to make sure that we can uh, have prior notification when it comes, for example, to critical minerals, uh, that we can impose conditions, that we can impose undertakings. I think it's just like eyes wide open. And I think the fact that we blocked three transactions recently uh, was well received by our allies around the world. I can tell you I've been in Japan, I've been in Korea and Germany. Uh, people understand we take national security, economic security very seriously and we're going to protect our, our critical uh, minerals because uh, as you know these critical minerals will power the economy of the 21st century. Three files in regarding critical minerals specifically? Just recently. The, you may have seen we, we blocked three transactions because these transactions need to be notified. How would you replace the investment from those foreign companies? Oh, are you there are so many companies who want to invest in Canada. Well, we have, we have a, a number of companies who want to invest. I can tell you, I've never seen. There's a record number of people who want to invest in Canada because what you want in uncertain times and with unprecedented challenges is stability, predictability, and the rule of law. And I think the world realized Canada is the best place when it comes to, to mining and refining. Uh, very high degree of ESG standards, uh, responsible mining, sustainable mining, respect for First Nation. Uh, I can tell you, you just have to see what I posted recently, met with the board of Mercedes-Benz, uh, Volkswagen, uh, the chairman of Salentis in Italy. Uh, we came from Korea, we were in Japan. Uh, listen, the level of interest for Canada, Canada is what the world needs in the 21st century. So it's very simple. Uh, I think that the level of investment you're going to see uh, is going to be unprecedented in the country. As Minister of the Treasury Board, yes. we understand some of the public sector unions are not happy with the idea of coming back to work for two days. And as a person myself who's back in the office, but some of my work co-workers are not, I still have to ask you, what do you see the picture for the Treasury Board? Will you order unionized workers to come back to work uh, for so those two days, all, what do you think? Uh, first of all, we're no longer in a remote by necessity approach. We are developing the hybrid by design. What do we need to do? Serve Canadians. And serving Canadians means that we need to evaluate how we will best serve Canadians. And hybrid by design is what we're doing right now. Departments have been sharing with us how the experimentation is going in the offices. And we are going to next step uh, discuss on how we make sure that we deliver those services. And the return in the workplace uh, will have uh, clearer lines uh, coming out very soon. You are the employer. Yes. And the unions aren't terribly happy about this, but you are the employer. You have the hammer at some point to order your it's workers It's not just back. a question of a hammer. It's a question of making sure we serve Canadians and the workplace the environment is important. The hybrid by design is very important. And also it's the employer's prerogative to decide how that condition of employment, of how we are going to deliver their services. So we are working on that right now, working with the clerk, working with the departments, and soon uh, we'll be seeing um, more information coming out on how we see hybrid by design, making it um, fairer and uh, more uh, a way of delivering our services. Puis parmi ceux-là, la majorité, c'est la haute fonction publique. Écoutez, moi, je vais vous dire tout de suite, le commissaire aux langues officielles travaille très fort. 
fait ses recommandations. Nous, de notre côté, comme vous savez, on travaille à moderniser la loi sur les langues officielles. On veut que le commissaire ait plus de temps, plus d'opportunités de pouvoir mettre ses recommandations de l'avant. Donc, on va Merci. continuer à faire ça. Est-ce qu'il faut envoyer un message à vos ministères que hey, vous devez répondre à ces recommandations? Est-ce qu'il faudrait envoyer... Je crois une... que le commissaire fait un bon travail. Je crois aussi qu'on doit lui donner plus de temps. Alors, on va pouvoir voir comment euh, la modernisation de la loi sur les langues officielles va se poursuivre après euh, les fêtes, j'en suis certaine, et donner plus de pouvoir au commissaire. Français, brefement, oui. sur le votre oui, message de la fonction. Oui, alors c'est important de mettre l'importance sur le fait que Travailler euh, par nécessité n'est plus euh, ce qu'on fait. Alors, on va évidemment euh, regarder le travail hybride euh, et s'assurer qu'on puisse offrir le meilleur service aux Canadiens possible. Cela veut dire que les fonctionnaires doivent offrir les services autant en ligne, à la maison, euh, qu'en milieu de travail. On est en train d'évaluer justement, à la suite de l'expérimentation que nous avons fait depuis quelques mois, comment on peut clarifier et s'assurer qu'il y ait une équité à travers euh, l'emploi des fonctionnaires et aussi comment on va mieux servir les Canadiens. Donc, c'est ce qu'on travaille dessus. Merci. Hi. I think the message is they want uh, their representatives to be positive, to show some unity, to work together for the ultimate goal of serving them effectively. They're not into the reckless stuff or the gimmicks or the sowing of division or feeding of anger. They recognize that uh, regardless of what level of government, regardless of what political stripe, make certain that you're serving us, listening to them, and that's what I am all about. What do you make of the very low turnout? I mean, it's a by-election that's often lower, but this was low even for a by-election. Well, yeah, it is. And we were always concerned about the turnout and certainly uh, with the general election and the municipal election was also very low and like people were tired. There was like three elections during the year. Uh, but the sample size of the, of the uh, electric was substantive and certainly the margin of victory was great and I feel very good about that. When you were finance minister in Ontario, you were a little bit critical of the federal government in terms of health transfers. What do you say today when the premiers want to meet the prime minister to discuss health care? <coughs> Well, one of the things that I was very sensitive about as the Minister of Finance, as the province, with his jurisdiction to oversee health care and delivering that service, uh, we were also very concerned about the ability to serve and maintain and sustain the programs. But one of them is to be accountable to them. And I was very supportive of having accountability measures put in place with those transfer of payments so that we can then ultimately provide funding for the things that really matter, right? The PSWs, the doctors, the, the hospital care, the, 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 the various operations and, and surgeries that were necessary to ensure that we were putting the forward monies towards what was necessary. And during this pandemic, a lot of money was provided and transferred to the provinces and not accountable. And so we want to make certain that people are being, again, well served. What kind of accountability measures do you think the provinces should agree to? Well, I only just got elected what, yesterday, <laughs> but I have thought about it. But I, I certainly would like to see how we can foster and support, provide the necessary supports, possibly increase them as a result, but finding ways to ensure that the services that are required are being met. And we do need to change. I mean, I'm, I'm actually a volunteer. I started a foundation to build a long-term care and affordable housing complex, 350 units. And I get it, it's a charity, it's a not-for-profit. But we recognize how difficult it is to, one, build it and then service it. And so in order to do that, we've got to make certain that we put the monies necessary towards it. Um, and so I think when we're looking at grants, we're looking at services, when the provinces are looking for the federal government to provide those supports, let's make certain that they're being employed correctly. Do you think we'll call you minister soon? Oh, I, I am so pleased to be a colleague and the member of parliament for Mississauga Lakeshore. That's what matters to me right Can now. I just say and I'm getting my bearings. About Charles. I have known Charles for almost 20 years before he nor I were political candidates. And I am so delighted to be standing here with him, representing the people of Mississauga. He and I are going to be uh, great colleagues. We've been friends. We continue to be friends, but now colleagues focused on serving the people of Mississauga. I'm so delighted. The Mississauga team is so strong. The people of Mississauga will, can count on both of us and the rest of our team to do right by them. Thank so thank you, very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Alors, vous, que la loi 96 s'applique aux entreprises fédérales. Ben, je suis très content de la rencontre qui va avoir lieu vendredi. D'ailleurs, une rencontre d'une heure qui va donner beaucoup de temps pour parler de différents enjeux, dont euh, le français. Et il y a une chose qui est claire, c'est qu'il y a une seule langue qui est menacée en Amérique du Nord. 
c'est le français, puis on doit tout faire ensemble. On doit travailler ensemble, d'ailleurs, pour renforcer le français. Mais écoutez, 96, c'est une loi provinciale. Moi, je ne vais pas me prononcer là-dessus. Ce que je veux dire, c'est qu'on a notre propre loi qui vise à renforcer le français en respectant les droits de la minorité anglophone. Et je pense qu'on peut collaborer et on va collaborer ensemble. Les demandes de Québec par rapport à la langue, c'est quoi le malaise? Qu Qu'est-ce qu que vous dites? Vous avez contre les demandes de Québec. Parce que la loi... La loi sur la langue officielle devrait euh, prendre compte de les nécessités de développer l'épanouissement de, des deux communautés de langue minoritaire euh, au pays, y inclut les anglophones du Québec. Quoi? La, la loi 96. Mais j'ai donné toutes mes opinions sur la loi 96 euh, euh, du, du, dans le printemps. Je suis, je suis contre la loi 96. Non, le Québec, qui est, par rapport à cette reste, vont être trop loin. Ça ça. En, encore, j'ai exprimé mes, mon point de vue hier. Qu'est-ce que j'ai dit? C'est que la loi fédérale devrait supporter les deux communautés euh, de langue minorité officielle dans le pays les anglophones du Québec et les francophones à l'extérieur du Québec. On devrait favoriser l'épanouissement des deux langues partout dans le pays. Ça, ça les demandes de Québec ne font pas ça, selon vous, c'est ça que... Non. Ils font, et, et, comme comme j'ai dit hier, euh, les, les choses qui vont dire qu'on va laisser au Québec le droit de gérer euh, quest ce qui va se faire pour les anglophones, le gouvernement fédéral a un devoir de supporter les deux communautés minoritaires au Canada, y inclut les anglophones du Québec. On va voir où, où, où on va sortir avec ces 13. En, encore, encore l'effort, c'est d'avoir une loi qui est euh, légalement, euh, légalement symétrie, euh, une symétrie légale euh, et une égalité réelle. Et ça, c'est le point. Quoi? Vous avez dit que tous les anglophones du Québec parlent français. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait? Michael Rousseau. J'ai dit... Encore, 94 des Québécois parlent français. La grande majorité de la communauté anglophone du Québec, certainement les jeunes, parlent anglais et français. Nous sommes bilingues et tout le monde devrait faire l'effort d'être bilingue et de parler français. Mais je vois le gouvernement le voit, c'est la cœur. Sur la ah, c'est pas à moi de, 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 de soupçonner qu'est-ce que c'est le, le point de vue du gouvernement du Québec. Tout ce que je peux vous dire, c'est au niveau fédéral, on devait protéger le français tout à travers le Canada, et on devrait aussi protéger la communauté anglophone du Québec et la communauté francophone hors Québec. C'est notre devoir comme gouvernement fédéral. Bonne journée. Je peux tout simplement vous dire qu'on est présentement en comité, on est en train d'étudier ce projet de loi. Nous procédons avec des amendements et donc nous en sommes au tout début. Donc, elles sont là, elles vont être considérées comme toutes les autres demandes. Vous, nous allons nous prononcer au comité lors de l'étude. Donc, au fur et à mesure qu'on les prend, les amendements, les demandes, tout va être étudié. Merci. Les linguistes, ça divise au Nouveau-Brunswick, puis que lui a été traité injustement en tant qu'une langue anglophone. C'est le comble de ce qui est le plus ridicule que j'ai pu entendre de, de, de premier ministre du Nouveau-Brunswick. Surtout de Blainix du Ligue anglais, qui a fait sa carrière, son début de carrière de politicien à vouloir abolir les droits linguistiques au Nouveau-Brunswick. Il est devenu, il a changé de camp, il était avec un parti anti-bilinguiste. Avant, le core, mm -hmm. changé de cas de vie libéral, il n'est anglais puis premier ministre. Donc, quel obstacle qu'il y a eu vraiment là? C'est ridicule, c'est une risée. C'est juste une question sur ces 13 de l'État. On a vu le diable, le temps de parole, qui a vraiment monopolisé sur la loi 96. Votre gouvernement a dit dernière semaine, semaines, on pourrait avancer le plus vite possible, il y a une urgence à gérer ça. Il y a un amendement sur une traite de deux ans. C'est sûr que les langues officielles, c'est un sujet qui est extrêmement sensible, puis que l'amendement d'hier, il y a eu des belles discussions, vous avez entendu le... Vous avez entendu comme moi, M. Dalton, un francophone de l'Ouest canadien, je veux dire, je pense que c'était un cri du cœur. Puis, comme il disait, c'était tellement important hier d'avoir attendu tous les angles. Peut-être qu'après ça, ça va débouler plus vite parce qu'on commence à fort avec quelque chose qui est extrêmement sensible, qui peut être divisif au pays, mais en même temps, qui peut être aussi rassembleur. Il faut parler du portrait linguistique du Canada sans être gêné. C'est ça le problème, je pense, qu'on est. On n'a pas très linguistique qui est clair, puis on est un petit peu... J'ai aimé d'en parler, c'est comme les Pères Noël, on le sort à Noël, on le, sort, on le range au 
1er janvier. Mais euh, j'ai bien aimé les commentaires de Dalton. Revenez là-dessus, vous allez voir. Moi, ça m'a touché en plein, en plein cœur. Puis je pense que c'est ce qu'on doit commencer à faire comme Canadien. Comme ça se faisait dans les années 60, mm -hmm. euh, on est fiers d'avoir un pays où il y a deux langues officielles. S'il y en a plus, tant mieux, mais il y a au moins deux langues officielles. Puis euh, il faut valoriser ça. C'est important. Uh, your ministry funds science uh, post-secondary. Sure. Exactly. And we're doing a story about the uh, lack of funding increases for yeah. post-secondary graduate and doctoral students. They haven't seen a, a funding raise for, sure. since 2003. What do you think about that? Should they get more money? Oh, definitely. I mean, listen, I, I've heard them. You know, I spoke to many of them. We've heard their message. We heard the need. And you know what? It, it's very much in line with what our government wants to do. Because since we came in government, recall probably since 2016, we invested like 14 billion in science to really own the podium. But now there is uh, there's a gap. Uh, we've seen the number, you know, with the inflation, but also just historically when you look at what the funding meant, you know, a decade ago and what it is today. This thing has remained constant. And it's clear that if we want to own the podium, uh, we need to do more to support the, the, the researcher, the students, and, and the scientists. So uh, I'm very much seized about that. This is going to be part of, of our discussion with the Minister of Finance. Um, we've invested massively to uh, rebuild our infrastructure, to make sure that science is at the cornerstone. We have a number of moonshot projects, but if we want, you know, today what is key is people, it's talent. That, that's really what people are, you know, are, are, are trying to get everywhere in the world. We're in a competition. We need to realize as Canadians that, you know, we are attractive, but to remain attractive, uh, we need to provide the funding necessary for not only having the infrastructure, not only having the moonshot projects, but having the people which are going to be driving these moonshot projects. So you're saying basically stay tuned, look for, look for it in the budget? Well, I would say stay tuned. Certainly we're making the case for it. As you appreciate, you know, there, there's a number of issues when it comes to budget, uh, especially at times like that. Uh, but I would say I heard the students, I heard the researcher, I heard the scientists, and we're very much seeds of that because I understand that if you want to own the podium, it starts with people. And then you need the infrastructure, and then you need the moonshot projects. But, but the students, the research and scientists are key to that. That would have been my message to the science committee uh, just yesterday, I think. We were supposed to have that, uh, which was adjourned for uh, reasons we all know. But uh, message has been heard, and we want to work with them. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas to everyone. Well, I'm fine. Good to you. Merci.